Got to start off on mute, don't we? How is everyone doing this evening? <laughs> Hopefully everybody is doing well. I'm Eve with the Baby's Booty, and we are going to do an embroidery project today. I, um, If you are in the Facebook hoop group, I did put a request out there to see what you guys were interested in doing today. So if you'd like to weigh in on certain Sundays, then just make sure that you're in the Facebook group at any point in time during that day on Sunday, and you will see a poll from now on popping up just to cater to the masses, so to speak. But we appreciate you joining us on this fine Sunday evening. Um, I am going to give me one second because I see that my thing is just about, oh, that's why I can't find what I'm looking for. I'm trying to make an adjustment to my, there we go. I don't know why that messes up every single time. Let's get this camera shifted where it's supposed to be. At any rate, back to our regularly scheduled. <laughs> Got to have something crazy going on every Sunday. At any rate, so we appreciate you joining us for our In the Hoop Embroidery Project today. And if we have time, we may add in something else. But for the time being, this project is so stinking simple, y'all. If you have never, ever, ever ever, ever, never done an in-the-hoop project before, this one is one of the easiest. So I'm excited to share it with you. It is a 5 by 7 project, uh, so we will be working with that today. And then we also have Miss Faith in the house. Uh, so we have our 5 by 7 set up right here beside me, and we are going to work with her today and get Miss Faith going. We uh, had some adjustments of a embroidery machine physician came in to do some adjustments and we got face up and running like she's supposed to be so super super excited about that and looking forward to working with face with you all today so now on Sundays I'm gonna go ahead and get started because normally what we do is we like to say hi to everyone who is taking the time out of their busy schedule to join and hang out with us today and that tonight's going to be no different I'm going to do that as well but I want to get started a little bit earlier so that we can get that going and then we can go ahead and get started on our project it is pretty easy but we may want to throw in a couple of variables make it a little bit more fun do some personalization and all of that part is what takes the time so First off, let's say hi to folks in here. Let me actually get the bell because I already know one particular bell ring that should be coming tonight. I'm super excited about that one. Uh, but meanwhile, let's go ahead and say hi to the folks in here. Inspiration Creations, Miss Lori, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and actually, uh, let me back up. Let me back up. I mentioned, I think it was last Sunday or Sunday before that we were going to put up pictures so please keep an eye out on the screen behind me because all of the pictures that were sent in and for some of you who I've met in person and I already had a picture that's probably going to be up there as well so definitely keep your eye out for your picture um, and I'll be doing a few more edits or whatever and it looks like there's a glare on it I'm trying to see I may have to end up tilting that TV but at any rate so yes some of you beautiful people will be up there on the screen behind me at any rate, Miss Lori, welcome. Thank you for joining us, Lila Nelson. Hey, Miss Lila Nelson, and yes, you are up there on that screen. <laughs> welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening, and thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Miss Presha is also a YouTube Hoop Group member, and we want to thank her as well, and thank you for joining us this evening. Miss Tyne Yu, yes, ma'am, you up there as well. <laughs> thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Sherry Castro is in the house. Welcome. EJ's daughter, welcome. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. Knickknack Nurse, hello. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening. So Crafty, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you very much for being a YouTube Who Group member. Simone Warren, thank you as well for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate the support of our channel. Beautiful soul, welcome. Thank you for joining us. For you as well this evening and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Gemini Wolf Gamer, hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you being here. Elaine Dickerson, you're welcome and thank you very much for joining us this evening. 
Mary Brown's in the house. Hello, my dear. Miss Ethel Smith is here. Hello, how are you? And thank you very much for being a regular supporter of our YouTube Hoop Group channel. Dana Carcamo, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully I've pronounced that properly. Miss 143, hello, how are you? Welcome, and thank you very much as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Rhonda Jones is in the house. Tam Tam's in the house. Ebony's ne Ebony Nesbitt says good evening to everyone. Sonya Siegler, hello. Jackie Maddox from Maryland, welcome. We also have Miss Shana Krause. Thank you, thank you. I know, right? <laughs> the Internet was a fool the last few weeks, but I'm trying to tell you, make few phone calls and raise a fuss. Some things can happen. So hopefully, let me hush before things change. But right now, it's doing okay. It's slashing between green and yellow. As long as it don't hit red, I think we'll be okay. Uh, COVID homeless action plan is Ms. Galena. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you on the Bleed TV. I appreciate that, Miss Lori. <laughs> Lacey Morgan, good evening. Thank you for joining us so very much. We appreciate you being here. Yvonne Hudson, thank you very much for being here this evening. EJ's daughter says, I see my face. <laughs> I told you to be there. I told you I was going to put them up. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the slideshows. Miss Social Deb, hey, my dear, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Marissa. Dandre is hello. How are you this evening? Thank you for joining us and happy Sunday to you as well. Shonda Coleman says Arkansas is checking in. Love the pictures in the background. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am tickled pink for the folks that sent some in uh, and enjoy putting that together up there. So too we begin embroidery. Hello. How are you, Miss uh, Shirley Seward? We appreciate you being here with us. Are you up there on that screen too? <laughs> appreciate you for uh, supporting our channel for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Thank you very much. So, too, we begin embroidery. Tam Tam ordered the Glow Forge. Holler! That's what's up. Get that Glow Forge on, girl. I'm excited for you. Look, that Glow Forge, I don't know. We've been talking about it. So, I'm doing DTF. I'm trying to master that. Once we master that, we'll see where it goes from there. But, <laughs> but for right now, I'm just going to leave well enough alone. Miss Beckham. Hey, Miss Beckham. How are you? How's everybody? Hopefully everybody's okay. Is Melissa there? If so, tell her I said hey. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Time you said just me on the scene. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Pearl Lucas, how are you this evening? Jane Kirk, hi. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Dana says I did. Okay, cool. Thank you very much because I, I get concerned sometimes. Hey, D. Ashley and Terry Barnhill, welcome. Thank you, Terry, and I appreciate y'all for joining us this evening. Miss Debbie Kidd, welcome. Yes, you have. We have missed you, but it's okay. You up on the screen, too, so we look forward to having you in here with us this evening. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. Miss Andrea Ross is here. Thank you so very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. And, yep, you up on that screen, too, girl. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Make sure I have everybody. Carmen Alvarado, welcome. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Thank you, thank you. I am looking for, uh, they're not here yet, but I'm waiting on them to come in because we got a big bell ring to ring tonight. But if you have any new babies, please let me know if they've arrived. Now, I know when we order them, those are awesome and fun and exciting to know about as well, but we like to ring the bell when that baby finally gets there because I'm trying to tell you that's a huge relief when it finally shows up. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Tiana, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Kathy Snyder, hello, hello. You're new to you, Bernina 770, Tula Pink Edition. Not pink. Oh, girl, she got the pink baby. Congratulations on your pink baby. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Tell Melissa it's okay. We happy to have her here every time she joins watching with you. That's exciting. That's what's up. Dana says she got her baby lock enterprise ten needle last week. Congratulations on ten needles. Yes. Holla. <laughs> That's what's up. Congratulations on the new baby. She got some multi needle baby. She got the five by seven baby. We got the five by seven baby sitting right here ready to go. I'm so excited. 
All right, you guys, so it looks like we've caught up on the fairly, oh, not fairly wells, but howdy do's. And as folks come in and mention the new babies, we'll catch up and ring the bell for them as well. But meanwhile, let us go ahead and mention what we've got on tap. So tonight we're going to do an In the Hoop project. And I was at Hobby Lobby, um, let's see, I was at Hobby Lobby last week, and I posted a picture in the Facebook group, and we found this pretty iridescent, uh, it's in the ribbon section, which is a trip, but it's like faux leather. Hey, Lupe, how are you? This is actually faux leather, but it is over in the ribbon section, and last week it was on sale, so unfortunately... If you didn't, weren't able to get some last week, the sale is now gone, but it's all right. So let's take the plastic off of it so that we can unfold this puppy and show you just how absolutely gorgeous. Look at that iridescent. Oh, doesn't it just, oh, uh, it just, oh, uh, the glitter, it just does something to my soul. I'm trying to tell you. So we're going to make a cover out of this. And on the back, it's kind of fuzzy a little bit. So this is one of their faux leathers. So let's wrap this back up. They had quite a few. Well, look at it. It just came off the roll, so we ain't going to worry about it because we're going to use this tonight uh, and probably use it up. We'll see how it goes because I'm going to actually do the outside with this and the pockets, and I'll show you in a minute what we're going to do. And then we have um, Shana said she wanted a type of bail. <laughs> That's what's up. The bell is there. Hey, Lonnie, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And then we have this gorgeous iridescent. Can you, can you tell I like iridescent stuff? Is this? I don't know. So we have another rainbow iridescent. This is more purplish, which is my style, my color. And let's peel this off so that we can see it better. Move that out the way. This, again, is faux leather. This was at Hobby Lobby as well. Look at that iridescent. Ugh. Uh, just, just, just make you want to just, just be pretty. I don't know what else to say. So we're going to do a cover out of this as well. So let me show you what we're working with. I went on to Amazon and I purchased these mini composition notebooks, right? Now, before we get started on this project, let me say that there are many different types of mini composition notebooks out there, Okay. I bought, went to Walmart thinking that this was the mini composition notebook, and it's not. These are much bigger. So now I just use this for my embroidery notes and whatnot. It sits beside me on the table. But this, I thought, was one. This came from Walmart. I thought it was right, but this is the wrong size. So definitely keep an eye out for the one where the book is four and a half by three and a quarter. That's the size the books need to be. And as you see, this is a 24 pack that I got off of Amazon. All right. So let me go ahead and hey, just by being yo, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And 2011 Miss Max, always welcome. Thank you for joining us. Let me go ahead and I look like I'm lagging a little bit. I apologize if I am. Uh, oh, we can go right. Yeah, and I'm going to show you guys, first off, on the website where this project is coming from is Designs by Little B, okay? Designs by Little B. And what I also want to point out to you is her whole entire website until tonight is on sale, okay? The entire website is on sale. So if you want to grab any of these designs, tonight would be the time to get it, okay? So let's switch you over to the website. Here is her website, Designs by Little B. And I'm going to do what I always do and blow it up so that I can make sure you guys can see it really well on the TV. And actually, let me do that so that I can see this as well. Okay, so here's her website. Y'all, I don't know if you play board games and stuff. My family and me and the kids have been playing board games for forever. We love games. Skip Bow is no exception. We love Skip Bow. Here's a cute little pouch that you can put your Skip Bow cards in. 
and that way when you go to your skip bowl, skip bowl games and you have your embroidered pouch with your cards, folks know you're serious and that you're there to whoop tail. So definitely check out the skip bowl um, pouch. And best believe if I show up with a skip bowl pouch, it's on. No hard feelings. It's, it's just business. Okay, so let you know that. Um, so that's skip bow. And then, look, these are totally adorable. I just got the applique tag set as well. Those are super cute. Um, these little circle applique monograms, eyelet key fobs, adorbs, okay? Look, and then your little, I've been obsessed with Starbucks lately. Here's little uh, coffee cups. And then, of course, she has featured products, but she also has um, what's new, and we'll click that in a minute. But look up here in this top yellow uh, banner. She says through June 12th, which was yesterday, but she extended it to today. So if you use her uh, code birthday for 60% off, I mean, I'm just, I'm here to tell you, you you're getting an excellent deal, okay? And that, that's any design purchase, so keep that in mind. So let's go to what's new, and I'm going to show you the project that we're looking at doing. I'm pretty sure it's still under what's new. Um, she also has these bags for the Nintendo Switch, which I've used that as well. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's check to make sure. Oh, I love this little quarter keeper, too. I'm going to be making that soon. Yahtzee as well. I'm okay with Yahtzee. I'm okay. No hard feelings on that one either. So here is a mini composition book cover. This is one of the few that she has. Now, this one is not the one we're making tonight. The reason why we're not making this one is because this one uses fold-over elastic. And I, at this moment, don't know where my fold-over elastic is. So I don't really want to start this particular project. But it's very similar. This is the book, and she, you know, just put a, a name on that one. Um, but it's super cute, and you see it's a, a fairly small size, so easy to carry with you and do stuff with. Uh, but here are two. I wanted to do this one, but I didn't have um, green on me tonight, and I didn't want to switch among all the colors. So this is the mini composition book cover that we'll be doing tonight. This one is notebook paper. Super cute. And this one just uses an elastic band, as you see. So super cute, super fun, and it's very, very, very easy to do. All right. So as you see, I've already bought it. So we have the design already. We're going to go ahead and load that up. And we're going to customize it as well. But... We'll do the plain one first. You know what? Why would we do that one? Let me find the plain one. I may just do the plain one instead. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we have this really pretty, I don't know, can this be notebook paper? Can we use this and do the notebook paper design? I don't know. That might be doing the most. So we may just find the plain one and do a plain one for right now and customize the plain one. And then... I don't know where the white leather is right now, but I think that would be cuter if we just used the white. Let me know what you think in the comments below, which route you think we should take with that. So meanwhile, we'll go ahead and switch us back over, and then we'll get you guys squared away on, uh, I'm going to pull up So What Pro, and that's what we'll use to customize our In The Hoop um, notebook cover. All right. So where are you? You are right here. Meanwhile, hopefully everybody has been doing well in this stormy weather, stormy and hot and everything else. Yes, her regular prices are absolutely phenomenal anyway. But every June she has a sale on her designs and unfortunately it ends today so if you're going to shop tonight will be the time to shop so let me get you guys i grabbed that crayon book cover to go with the little pouch you showed us a few years ago for the grants oh they would love that they would absolutely love that hey miss lady d how are you welcome thank you for joining us this evening 
Simone Langley, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. <laughs> PJ Coppage is in the house. Eartha Lewis, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. So let's switch us back over to our desktop since I already have the um, so what Pro pulled up. And what we're going to do is go to open, and this is on my desktop. Okay, that's the tag. I don't want the tag. Mini composition notebook cover. I think this is the plain one, so let's open this up. Okay, so if you purchase, she has one that's the mini no mini composition notebook cover. It's plain, but it also comes with an applique. So that's pretty cool because once you do uh, the notebook cover, even if you have horrible-looking vinyl that you may not really want to use, you can put an applique over the top, and it will look completely different. So this type of um, using the applique would be cute if you have adorable fabric that you want to feature. So like Minnie Mouse or a gaming fabric or theme, any theme fabric, cotton, something like that, you can use with this applique. But we're going to go with the plain one, and we're going to grab the 5 by 7 Let me make sure I have the PES version, even though in Solar Pro it doesn't matter because I will customize it and save it as PES anyway. But we'll go ahead and open it up. And here is the notebook cover. All right, now... The way the notebook cover is set to stitch out, it's showing up and down. So that, let's go ahead and open these books, actually. I don't know what 24 people I know that don't have a notebook. Even though I thought about doing, like, little bitty embroidery notes books and keeping them in, a, like, a drawer or something so that, I would be able to go back and customize the cover with the name of the customer or something like that. I thought that was a cute idea. But anyways, so the way this is going to embroider is pretty much with it flat, just like that. All right. So when you see it on the screen, that's why it's laid out this way. So if you want to customize it, then you would need to customize it either in this top half for the front of the book or this back half for the back half of the book. Or you can orient it the other way. This is entirely up to you, however you want to do it. Monogram would be really cute. What else do you think would be really cute? Uh, where you did... You... Wait a minute, hold on. Let me move this over so I can see it. Where did you get it? My grandbaby loves it. Which design? Let me know which design you're talking about. Eartha Lewis says, have to get those after the show is over. Yeah. It is going to work out better if the um, once everything is over because you got to sit there and scroll through all those designs that I'm trying to tell you. It takes a while. Hey, Sheila Cushenberry, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Marge Campbell says, hi, hello, how are you? Welcome, and thank you for reminding on the thumbs up. Iris Diaz, Ms. Diaz, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. So what do you think? We You, want, you guys think we should uh, monogram? tonight or put a name we can do both it doesn't matter because once we do this it'll be for me I'm super excited so let's actually start with a name we'll put my name on there why not green yoda for kids design i have a green yoda design where did you see a green Yoda design? Was that on, uh, that might have been on that website. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Did I close out? Yes, I did. I'm forever closing out my stuff. Let's go here and bring this down. Let's go back and see if that's, if you saw Yoda there because I, I didn't. Um, nope, it wasn't on there. So let's go to new. Got your she shed on the road to completion, flooring tables, new heat press, and all the sewing machines. Oh, it's been a while ago? Um, ooh. 
I'm doing good to remember what I did this morning when I woke up. I'm not sure about the Yoda because I don't remember doing anything with Yoda on it because that's, I don't remember doing anything with Yoda. Send me an email if you remember what I did um, because I don't know. Your name is like a monogram, so it works either way. That's true. That's true. Let's see, said the blind man. We'll go into so embroidery lettering and see if I have any fonts available. Yes, I do. So I'm going to go with one and a half inches, and we'll see what that ends up looking like. That's kind of cute. We can work with that. All right, so... So What Pro does have font mapping built into it now so that you can map your fonts. You have to actually map the fonts, and then you can type them out on the keyboard. There's a bit of a learning curve with it, but I do have a tutorial on my website if you're interested to learn how to map your fonts, and that's um, available on our website. So meanwhile, this is sufficient. My name is there. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to close, and bam, just like that. My name is now on this book. How cool is that? So let's grab the V, and I'm going to move it over because all that spread out is just not going to work for me. And then let's grab this E and move it over and put it all together. And so here is Moi's name. So hopefully this isn't too big. I'm going to rotate it and check first. Just to be sure, 89.90. Boom, not too big. Okay, cool. We'll move it over a little bit more anyways. Actually, because I want the band to be in the middle of the book, so I'm going to move it down some. All right. So here we are with our, with my name. And what I'm going to do is join threads of the same color. So let's go to Edit, Join Threads, and then join all adjacent threads of the same color and click OK. So now my name is going to stitch out all three letters without stopping. Okay, so if you put a name, you put your letters out there, and they stitch one, na one letter and then stop, stitch the next letter and then stop, that's why you didn't join all of the threads. Now, if I wanted to do each letter of a different color, then you can leave them separate, and it will go ahead and stop in between threads. Now, that's on a single needle machine. A multi-needle machine, it would plow right through all three letters. So keep that in mind when it's time to do the book. She got the Cricut Mug Press. Well, congratulations, Shirley Dabney, on your Cricut Mug Press. I just had the bell. What did I do with it? Y'all, I'm forever misplacing stuff. I just, just had the bell. Oh, it's on the embroidery machine. Congratulations! <laughs> Y'all, congratulations. And then I see now Miss Sheila, I'm sorry, Miss Social Deb. Got a new sublimation printer and a heat press. Made some great projects last week. Holla! Woo! Yes! Good girl! Good girl! All your cool stuff. Y'all gonna have fun with all y'all's new babies. Just all y'all's new babies. I just love it. Congratulations. Let's get our stabilizer up and going. I am not going to use the cutting table tonight because the cutting table, I have moved it into the other room so we're not going to go into the other room so we have five by seven that we're going to work with tonight with miss face and i don't want my stabilizer to be too terribly big so it'll start right there and we are going to cut here all right now Set our stabilizer roll down there, and we're definitely going to fool with two projects, so that's why I don't mind it being a little big. Let's see what this looks like in half. Make it easier to cut. Now, hooping is probably going to be a fool. 
because I don't have flat. Oh, well, I could probably use that flat surface right there. Oh, first, check it, check it, see you, check it. Y'all, yeah, look at that. Perfection, perfection. I need to see what size roll that is. So that works. We're going to go ahead and cut this in half so that we'll have our stabilizer for both projects. And our two pieces. So we're going to go ahead and hoop this. I'm going to use this only because it's going to help me hold my hoop in place while I get this thing. Why is this hoop so tight? I don't remember tightening it up that bad. Hold on. There we go. Let's loosen that up. Give you some wiggle room. Pull, fine. All right. So there's my 5x7. Let's get our stabilizer on there. And then just like that, we have our hoop. So now that we have our stabilizer, okay, it's on the hoop. I'm going to set that right there. The next thing we want to do <clears throat> is save our design, actually. I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do save as. And I'm going to save it to my desktop just because. Um, and then I'm just going to add my name to it. I'm not going to do DST. We're going to do PS. And then we'll hit save. Okay. So there's my file. And save takes USB. So I'm going to grab this USB key. And I'm going to put it in my computer, and we're going to take that design and put it onto the USB key so that it can get to uh, face. I have a lot of stuff on this USB key. I might need to find a naked USB key because I don't want to scroll through stuff. So let's find us a naked USB key because I went and purchased a whole heap of them with pretty colors. But I have purple, so we're going to use purple tonight. Yeah. All right. We're going to put all of my USB substances back up. And whoop, now we're going to put the purple in. Now, hopefully, this one is naked. I don't remember putting anything on there. And yes, it is. All right. So we'll go ahead and go desktop, find... Mini composition, notebook cover E, which is right here beside Lori. And we're going to drag, whoop, nope, we ain't going to drag it nowhere because I don't see my E drive. Scroll down, there's my E drive. So now I'm going to drag it over to the E drive. Boom, just like that, we now have our daughter. Miss Elsa, Deb, thank you for joining back up with the YouTube Hoopoo Crew. Yes. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate the support of our channel. Always appreciate you guys' support. Y'all have no idea how totally awesome that is. So Cute Boutique Store, we are working on a mini composition notebook cover by Designs by Little B. The link to her website is in the description below. And she has 60% off her entire site right now, the whole site. So definitely check that out. Um, so crafty, no worries. No worries whatsoever. So we have our mini composition notebook cover right here on our jump drive. So let's close that out. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead. And what I'm going to suggest is something I would suggest to any of you when you start doing your In the Hoop project. Unless you've done the project multiple times over and over, don't assume that you know what to do. Look at the directions. So I'm going to pull up the directions because I don't have time for screw up. We mess up enough as it is on accident. <laughs> so we're going to pull up the directions. So let's close this out. Whoop. I missed the whole X. What in the world? So here we have the instructions for the mini composition notebook cover. And here is one that she completed. It's plain. And she added the monogram on it, which that monogram is totally adorable. Absolutely love it. I probably should have grabbed that. Embroidery Diva, hello, Carolina Thread Place, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so as you see, the notebook covers are designed for four and a half tall by three and a quarter inch wide, okay? 
four and a half tall by three and a quarter inch wide. Why this size and not this size composition notebook? Well, this fits five by seven. This does not. So that's why she did that for us, for this cute little project. So this is a five by seven, definitely project. She does have them for a little bit larger, but for right now, uh, five by seven is the one that we're fooling with tonight. Um, actually, give me when we finish with this, remind me, and we'll look up and see how much that pack of notebooks were that I bought off of Amazon because I don't remember. Okay, so what we'll need is a piece of vinyl or non-fraying fabric that we use for in the hoop projects, okay? So, Will, you can stop me and let me know what you need to let me know. <laughs> so, here is our vinyl. Like I said, I got this from Hobby Lobby. It was in the ribbon section, okay? And this is also a Hobby Lobby in the ribbon section. The site says sale ended yesterday. It was extended to today, yes. That is correct, which is why the banner is still up there. She's awesome. She always extends out the sales. She's just super sweet like that um, because usually what happens is people will be like, oh, no, the sale ended yesterday and I missed it. And so she, she just automatically extends it anyway. Um, so here is our vinyl that we're going to use tonight. All right. And so she says one piece of vinyl that is approximately – um seven and a half to eight inches wide okay so give me one moment because we definitely want to ring the bell for mr will he said he got his swf mas 12 on wednesday congratulations on your big baby <laughs> industrial awesomeness ah! <laughs> will has been doing all kinds of cool stuff with his baby making all kinds of cool things with him industrial machine. EJ's daughter, they are sixteen ninety nine for twenty four at Amazon. Thank you for looking that up. And I think they actually have a smaller pack. I know they had a larger pack and I was like, okay, that's overkill. I don't need that many books. So I got the twenty four pack. Hey Gail McNair, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Appreciate you being here. Hey Ray Williams, thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to let you know if you did go to Hobby Lobby and buy this ribbon uh, vinyl, if you buy this vinyl or even the other, and they have rose gold, they have gold. They have all kinds of, I mean, plaid. I mean, they have a lot of rolls of vinyl over there in that ribbon section. The cool thing about this is this one in particular is 8 inches, okay? So we don't have to worry about whether it's 8 inches or not wide, okay? But we still need to cut it right at about 6 inches long, okay? So it's 8 inches wide, and we need to cut it 6 inches long for this project. So as you see, one piece of vinyl, 7.5 to 8 inches wide, um, by five and a half to six inches tall. And notice she has a note. If there's an orientation to your fabric, orient it horizontally, okay? So, like, I have a vinyl with llamas on it, and all of the llamas are facing one direction. So I need to be aware of that when I'm doing my notebook so that my llamas, when I go to look at my notebook, my llamas aren't pointing down. You know what I'm saying? They're face up like they're supposed to be on the notebook. So keep that in mind. Then you want two pieces of vinyl for the pockets that will be two and a half inches wide by five and a half to six inches tall. And then one piece of elastic cording or fold over elastic. I'm not doing fold over. Remember, we mentioned that. Um, eight inches long for, um, I'm sorry, 10 inches for cording. All right. Um, and she recommends using something to wrap the book clothes as the vinyl tends to be a little stiff when it's first folded over. And then if you're doing the applique version tonight, we're not. We're doing the plain version. But if you're doing the applique version, the pattern will tell you when to stitch that. And you'll need two pieces of scrap fabric, four inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And as I showed you with the applique version, there's applique on the front and applique on the back. If you wanted to, you didn't have to do both appliques. So that's pretty cool. Um, but that's the thing that I absolutely love, 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 love about designs by little b and all of her projects she loves when you adapt her designs and change it up 
you know, make it your own. She absolutely loves that. So with the applique one, it's applique on the front and the back. If you did it just on the front, she would love it. She was like, oh, my God, that's gorgeous. You know, it's just really cool. I love her and love her design. If adding something to the cover and or using the applique and a piece of fold over elastic, she's going to recommend placing the merge design and making sure the orientation of the fabric is such that the placement and tack down for the fold over elastic will be on the back of the book. See the screenshot below of my software after I added the monogram. If you're not using fold over elastic, you can orient your name monogram fabric however you like, okay? So as you see, um, fold over elastic will be over here, and then the initials will be on the front, all right? So that's it's important that when you're doing in the hoop projects, you read, 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 and get your um, instructions correct. And I'm bad about skimming over and missing steps and stuff, so that's why I'm, like, preaching to you because I know the mistakes I've made, all right? So let's get started. Let me make sure. Um, Gail Boer, hello to you. Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, if I hadn't said it already. Um, good evening, Diane McCoy. Welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, yes, I don't, I do have a few minutes. That's not an issue. So the first thing it says to do, step one, let me zoom out because this is like huge, huge. Okay, so the first step, it says hoop medium to heavyweight stabilizer, which I did, minus tearaway. But as she says, in her opinion, tearaway or cutaway doesn't matter. And now we want to stitch the placement line for the notebook cover. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do step one. Actually, we can't do, well, we can do step one, but I need to cut this. I haven't cut it yet. Excuse me, what did she say? Uh, five and a half to six inches of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is cut this after we stitch um, the first steps so that while y'all are watching that stitching, I can find a ruler because I don't have one right here with me. So let's get y'all switched over to the embroidery machine so that you can see Miss Faith in action. Alright, so I'm going to Pull this back a little bit and move it back in place once we're done. All right, so here is Miss Faith. And as you see right now, I have gray thread up here. Your thread really doesn't matter. It would be better probably if I use a thread uh, closer to the color. But for right now, we're not going to worry about it. Um, here is the drive with the design on it so let's go ahead and put that in and then we're going to touch uh usb and well there we go usb and then we'll grab that and then we'll upload it into the machine and there that that was about as simple easy easy peasy mac and cheesy and as you see we already have our stabilizer hooped and we have our bracket to the right side so let's go ahead and put that on the machine so that we can stitch out the first step okay so all right there we go i didn't hear it click but it should be okay all right so now as we mentioned our first step is to stitch out our placement stitches okay so let's Go ahead and put our foot down and hit go. Meanwhile, I'll be in the background looking for a um, looking for a ruler. My um, thread came up a little bit right there. All right. So now that we have stitched our placement stitches, here is the vinyl. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is measure six inches, which is, as you see right here, and then I'm going to cut this. But I'm going to cut it with scissors so that we don't waste time. And our next step after doing the placement stitch, oh, sorry, let me move the chat over so that I can see it because I can't see the chat. Hey, Laverne Miller, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I put the ruler in front of the machine to show. Oh, you can buy that ruler. I don't like that ruler. <laughs> it was one in front of the machine, but I don't, that's a like a school ruler. I don't, I don't like that one. <laughs> I got spoiled. I love these stupid uh, quilting rulers, and that's my preference. And uh, but you're right. Yes, my ruler was right there. So I'm getting ready to cut this. Meanwhile, our step number two says the next steps are placement and tack down for a piece of fold over elastic. Okay, so that's step number two. Now we're not using fold over elastic. So it says if you are using fold over elastic. Follow the steps below. If you're using elastic cording or nothing, skip this step, okay? So what we want to do is skip color stop number two because we're not using fold over elastic, okay? So in order, in order, in order to skip number two, let's get you switch back over. In order to skip number two, we need to go to the screen and we should be able oh adjust and then we want to touch the needle and then we want to skip to the next color stop okay so now we're on color stop number three of six so now that we've done that let's go back to the computer because we skip skip number skip step number two so now we're going to go down to number three it says next, pin or use adhesive spray for your vinyl or fabric to cover the placement stitches. Stitch anything you've added to the design now. All right. So let me let me stop and show one thing that I did not do that I should have done. So we did our design. I added or we pulled up the design in Sew It Pro. I added my name, right? So my name is here, and then I joined the stitches, and that was it. I should have moved my name, color stop number six, to above number three, in between two and three, so that I don't have to use the machine to skip ahead. The machine would have had it in the right order, and I didn't do that. So we're going to have to manually skip and do it ourselves, which... I shouldn't have done it that way, but I did. Um, and then it says, if you're using the applique version, then here's the applique stuff, but we're not doing applique. But right here, it also says, if you're going to use elastic instead of fold over elastic, stitch the placement circle for your little hole now if desired. So that should be a part of it as well. So step number three, first off, we need to adhesive spray and attach it to the um, stabilizer to cover the placement stitches, all right? So let's do that. I'm going to grab my 505 spray. I'm pretty sure that's the one that is sewing. Yes, 505 is the one that you can use for sewing, and it should not gum up our needles, and I'm just going to use it very sparingly. Yeah, I'm not going to be using 505 tonight, are we? <sighs> Let's grab the other embroidery spray. That's not 505. It's not my favorite, but I'm going to use it anyways. All right, so, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. Oh, y'all, look. A half a head back up. I'm trying to tell you 505 spray. Yay! I can't believe I had an extra one. Okay. Boom, just like, ooh, that was still too much. To me, that's too much. Right, still too much. So 
uh, we're going to rub on that a little bit because I don't like a whole lot of um, spray. All right, so we have our spray. I'm going to I got all my stuff. I don't know what that is. on the I got on my, um, looks like where I have my water probably. All right, so let's slide this and cover our stitches. So our stitches are covered up with this absolutely gorgeous iridescent purple fabric. All right. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Pearl Lucas is in the house. Hello, Debbie D. Hey, Debbie D. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and for being a YouTube Who group member. We definitely appreciate that. Angelia Baker, I hope you feel better. Good night to you. Good night to you. Uh, Maria says, wish I had caught this from the beginning. Will it be safe? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Debbie L., yes. Love having mishaps. That's how we roll around here. So let's switch back over to the machine because, as we mentioned, we put the adhesive spray on the back of the vinyl, all right? So now we're going to add the name. I'm going to have to manually fast forward to my name on the machine, which isn't an issue, and we'll show you how that's done. But we're also going to do the elastic cording, I believe, in this step, and we'll see if it's, oh, I see it. It's the next step after the step that we're on now. But we'll get there. So let's switch back over to the machine so that you can see this absolutely pretty fabric look at that rainbow flashing over the top of the darn um vinyl on the machine it's just that's just so pretty it's just so pretty all right so as you see right here this is i don't know what step that is but we're going to skip that step and then here's the hole that's going to go in the middle for the elastic cording okay but all of this is not where we need to be so I'm going to advance, use the plus button beside the spool of thread, and move to where my name is, which is the last step, is step number six. And now I am stuck with the idea of should I use gray or should I, I'm just going to use gray because it's already there, and I don't want to do anything different. So we're right here in step number six, so we're going to tell it to go ahead and go. And we're going to stitch my name on the front of the book. I think gray will look all right on this. I really do. I'm pretty sure we'll be all right. Oh, let me tilt it down so you can see better. Even though with all that glare, it's kind of hard to see anyway. Hi, Maria Jackson. How are you? Welcome. face stitching like a pro. Go ahead on, girl. Meanwhile, I'm going to see if I can't find another color for the other vinyl. I don't remember where it is. I haven't touched it in a while.
Good night, beautiful soul. Have a good night, my dear. Hey, Juana. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thir- purple thread would be nice, and I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use purple for the other, the glitter one. So, super excited about that. Uh oh, Miss Ursula Lewis, I'm sorry. Hopefully the power will come back on soon. My goodness. Oh, Lord, this thing is almost done. I didn't realize we were that close. Okay. So, let's see. I have it last recording here somewhere. There it is. Woohoo! Y'all. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So the machine thinks we're done, but we're not. We just put the name. And remember, it said any customization, do it now. Um, Also, if you're going to add the hole for the elastic, and I found some elastic that I have, uh, that I purchased on clearance a couple of years ago, so we're going to use that. And so what I'm going to do now, because it finished out the design, I'm going to go back to the beginning and fast forward to the little circle because that's where we were. And you can't see that. So let's back it, back it up, back it up, back, back, back it up. And tilt this back up. Boom. Okay. So let's fast forward. Step three we don't need. Step four is the hole. So that's where we'll start, and I'll go ahead and tell that to stitch. Easy enough. And so now I'm pretty sure we're at one of the finishing um, parts, but meanwhile we'll go ahead and double-check like we're supposed to and look at the instructions. So let's switch over to our website. I'm sorry, not our website, but our instructions on Adobe. And let's scroll down because we've already put our name. And even though she doesn't show the hole right here, we've done our hole. So step four says now we want to remove the hoop and flip it over, which would explain why we need to use spray adhesive, right? So grab your pocket pieces of fabric and place one on each end of the project, lining the edges up against the tick marks you see in the placement step on your stabilizer. Pin or tape is pinning, pin from the front so you don't have sharp pointies against your machine, and then run the outline around your notebook cover. Easy enough? Did you catch all the instructions? All right, we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to actually tape mine down because I'm pretty sure I have tape somewhere over here on this desk because I was just using it the other day on stabilizer. So obviously I've moved it. So I'm going to have to use regular tape, but no worries. We'll get to that here in a moment. So what the instructions said was to take the hoop off, flip it over, and we're going to do our pocket pieces. Now, who can let me know whether or not I've already cut out the pocket pieces? Raise your hand if you know the answer. I haven't cut out any pocket pieces yet, so we need to do that. So let's scroll back up and make sure of the size. So two pieces of vinyl for the pocket, approximately two and a half inches wide by five to six inches tall. Now, this is already eight inches this way. I already know that. So let's let's see, two and a half inches wide. If I do two and a half, two and a half, that's five. But if I go five and a half this way, I'm just trying to make sure I make the most use of my vinyl. So we're going to actually go five this way and then uh, get our vinyl. So five is right here. And I'm going to do this. Hold it against itself so I'll know 
and it's darn near close to the right size. All right, and then I'm going to cut. Now, ordinarily, what I love to do with her projects like this, when there's a pocket that needs to be made, I like to um, use chalkboard or blackboard fabric instead uh, because it's usually on the inside of the project or the back side of the project, so it's not readily seen. But in this instance, I don't know what to do with my chalkboard fabric, so I'm having to use the vinyl that we are using already. So that sucks, but it will be all right. All right, and then it said five and a half to six inches tall, so we're going to take off a couple of inches of this. Uh, so let's cut this, and I'm sorry that you can't see what I'm doing, but here's our five by five, basically. Actually, that's more six by five, six by five, and then we need it two and a half inches wide, okay? So here we got, oh, books on my face. Let me go from this side so that I can see better. Two and a half is right here. And then we'll make this cut in half, which I could have folded this and done it that way too. Boom. All right. So let's switch over to the machine now that we have our pockets cut. And then we're going to flip the hoop over and apply these to the back side of the hoop. Let me also grab my regular tape since somebody doesn't know where the blue tape is. All right. So let's take this off. Well, actually, let's raise the foot first. And let's take this off. Okay, super cute. Oh my god, it's adorbs. The gray isn't bad. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so what they're saying is flip it over, and then when we did our placement stitch, it came in and made these tick marks right here, right? So, what we want to do is apply our vinyl and lay it right side up against those tick marks so that once it stitches this outline, all of that is covered, all right? So let's tape that down, hopefully, with regular tape. And what I'm going to do is put the tape to the outside so that it doesn't stitch through this tape that technically shouldn't be stitched through, all right? There's one pocket. Sorry, hope you hope you didn't miss that. And then here's the other pocket. Like so. Hello, Pamela Bradley White. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. EJ's daughter, yes. Moving the steps back and forth is imperative. So as you see, we have both of our pockets now on the back. I didn't use pins. I just used regular clear tape, but I put the tape away from the stitch line. Well, except for right there, it's going to stitch through it, but I don't think it'll kill us dead. And then here is the front. So now we're going to stitch our last step. I'm going to put this right back on the machine. And let Faith do her thing. Do her thug thizzle. Now it clicks. All right. So we're going to put our foot down, and we're going to stitch. This is our last step. The name is not. Because if we had to save the name for last, we would have stitched through our pockets, right? And we don't want to stitch through the pockets. So let's go ahead and stitch the last step. Just as easy as it can be. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Faith. I left the tape on the darn machine. All right. Cute. 
Hello, Treasure Designs. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. We appreciate you being here with us. Cute. OMG. All right. All right. So it moves to the step of doing my name, which we're not going to worry about it because we've already done it. So let's raise our foot. Let's get the hoop off. And here is our totally super cute book thingy, book cover. All right, so let's switch over to our main cam. And we'll take this out of the hoop. And here is the back so that you can see where the pocket stitched down. And if we had to stitch the name on there at the very last, then we would have messed up and we wouldn't be able to um, put our book in the pocket because it would stitch the pocket closed. So we take this, oh, I forgot to tape it on there. I'm like, why is this not coming out of the hoop? That's why. All right, so let's peel this tape off. Peel this tape off. I don't like using, there we go. Peel this tape off, and all I'm doing is just pressing it back up against the back of the stabilizer, and then we'll take this tape off. I mean, move that tape. All right, so now we just need to cut this out, all right, and use our scissors to trim up against the edge of the stitching as kind of as close as you can, but please don't cut through your stitches. All right. All right, so steady hand. You don't have to speed through this part unless, of course, you're making hundreds of these to sell or something. Then, you know, you might want to be a little quicker. But for the most part, just take your time. Go around the edges. The simple straight cut. And then you're done. Whoop, I'm getting close to my stitches right there. Come on now. And there we have it. Look at how cute that is. Oh my god. I gotta put this in the book. Okay. So what we need I got a couple of jump stitches. Hold on. I got a couple of jump stitches there that I want to trim. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can trim that later. But what I do want to do is do our elastic, okay? Because I actually found elastic, so we're going to use this elastic, all right? So what she suggests is using an awl, um, which I'll show you what an awl is, or if you have one of those hole punchers like a leather punch, which I have one, where it is I don't know right now. Um, but I do know where my awl is, so I'll grab that and show you the awl because I came across it the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even realize I had these, and it was a trip, even though as of right now, I don't see them. Man, ain't this about a blip? Where did I see those darn things? Well, I guess I won't be showing you at all. I think, oh, well, here's my other thing, though. I can show you this. I don't know what I did with those all. A W L and all is a just a metal stick with a point sharp pointy edge. You just stick it through the fabric is an all. So technically, you can use the same ripper to do the same thing. Here is a leather punch. This is a leather punch, and as you see, you can do different hole sizes and punch the hole in the leather with this. This is at um. Hobby Lobby, all right, 
This is not the best quality. I bent this um, I, on one that I had before I bent it on accident. I'm not happy. But we're going to use this anyway. So it has a little hook thingy to hold it shut for storage. And as you see, it comes down and it punches a hole. You put, you know, what you're trying to punch a hole in, sandwich it in between, and then press and squeeze. And you may have to twist a little bit to get that hole in there. All right. So we have all these different hole sizes. I'm probably going to shoot for the smallest size, and we'll explain why in a little bit. But you kind of want to take this, pull this out some kind of way. I can't remember. How do you get this out of there? Because you got to twist the, um, oh, there's a little tool in here, a little wrench to help. Actually, the wrench is to, you can, you can, like, if the tip gets dull, you can change them by using this little ratchet to take the tip off. But I'm going to use this to open up the uh, thing, because right now I can't remember how that works. It's been a while. It seems like it was, um, oh, never mind. You just twist it. Duh. It's been a while. So you just twist it, you turn it. That hurts my fingers. And no, I'm not going to use the smallest, but I'm going to use the next to the smallest one to punch the hole. Now, it may not work. And I will tell you why it may not work. Because the clearance from here to here is not much. And see, i got to get to the middle of that notebook. So I'm going to try and fold it and see if it will help me get closer so that I can punch that hole right there. Yep, it worked. Okay, barely, but I got it. Got it in the middle. Okay. Can you see that? And all I did was put it right over where the circle stitched with the machine. And I'm checking the back to make sure I don't have any of my other vinyl sandwiched in there. And I'm just going to squeeze. And it clicked. I don't know if you heard that. But that click is it punching through the vinyl. And just to be sure, I twisted a little bit and then let go. And my hole should be there. All right. So you should be able to punch this out with your, yep, there we go. So you may have to, like, grab it and pull it out. But there's our hole is in the middle now. Okay. So then she said the elastic needed to be 8 inches. We have our elastic, and here's my ruler. The, drop my bottle of water. The ruler I like to use, and we're going to come down to 8 inches, which is right here, and we're going to cut. All right, put that there so I'll find it later. All right, and then all you pretty much will do is stick one end into the hole. And try your best to stick the other end into the hole, the same hole. Which is kind of hard to do when you need reading glasses and aren't wearing them. There we go. All right, and once it's through the other side, we're going to tie a knot. All right. Now, I can't do this holding up to the camera, unfortunately. And hopefully we won't pull it all the way through. That would make me a little sad. Let's see. Let me, I'm going to put a pin right there because I'll be frustrated if I come through and, and pulled it all the way through. So I'm going to put a pin right there to keep from pulling it through while I knock this thing. All right, there's my knot. I'm trying to get it close to the end. All right, and I'm going to trim off some of this excess to even it off. And there is our elastic for closing the book. 
And now let's put our book in there. So here's the front. I want my name on the front. Slide that into the pocket. And then slide the other end on into the other side. Uh-oh. I must have cut too close, y'all. Look at that. My flap is coming loose. So I'm probably going to go back with my sewing machine and work on that. But for right now, nobody knows about that but me. <laughs> oh, wait. And y'all, but it's okay. Y'all ain't going to tell nobody. So see, isn't that cute? OMG. It's got my name. It would have been cute to put something up there, like a little heart or something. And then on the inside we have where we can write notes or what have you. And then there's the back. And here's our book. And we have our elastic to keep it all nice and tidy and closed. How super cute is this? Super, super cute. Absolutely love it. So I love this vinyl. I'll definitely be grabbing a little bit more if I can find some somewhere um, and making another. But meanwhile, we have more vinyl. So we'll put us together another one and see what we can't uh, come up with for that one. Now, I saw a question about the vinyl holder. We should have timed it. We can do another one and we'll see what the timing is, especially now that we know how to do it and don't absolutely have to read the designs. I'm still going to double check the designs. The little circle was for the elastic. And yes, it was a very quick stitch out as long as you're able to keep going with it. Oh, thank you, uh, Galena, for my dress. Thank you very much. Um, EJ's daughter, I did put my grid holder in place. Um, let me see. Can y'all see that? I'll show you what I did. I made a change to it, and I'll show you what I did do with it. I don't turn it too terribly much. And why is my thing still off center? I just noticed that. Sorry, y'all. Kind of um crazy about some stuff. I don't want to fix that. I don't understand why that's the case. Okay. There we go. Sorry, I shouldn't have a black bar right there. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I did do with it and um, let you see how it turned out. Let's move that out of the way. Here is my sublimation printer and here is the my regular office work type printer to print paperwork and whatnot. That sounds horrible. I really need to oil that. But I put it back here. See? I don't know how well you can see that. I don't want to turn it too much because of the power cords on the back. But I put the vinyl back here. I didn't finish putting vinyl on it. But I did zip tie it to the back of this. And instead of trying to put it on the concrete wall, because you remember I told you I was having issues with the concrete. And I don't want to keep putting holes in that concrete. So that's what I did. Uh, okay, let's stop that. I'm going to have to get WD-40 before we put up another one. I mean, before I put that back. But that's what I did with the vinyl holder. So let's move to our um, let's move to our next set of vinyl. Hey, Sheila Cuffy, you're on my TV. I was just talking about you earlier. I told my honey, I was like, I had fun talking to her, and he he remembered you. Um. Let's see. Lila, Will, Matt, and me, Debbie and me. Yes, a lot of pictures back there, a lot of pictures. Hey, Debbie L. Um, Maria Jackson, thank you. Rena Jones, welcome. Thank you for joining us and for letting us know you're new to the chat. We appreciate you being here with us this evening. Um, so hopefully you guys liked the little book and thought it was super cute. As I mentioned, it's a very, very, very easy in the hoop project to do. Um, where was it? I saw a question. I apologize. Cricket projects. Cricket projects are super awesome. We will be doing some of those. This could have been a cricket project. This really could have been partially a cricket project. So what you could do, you remember we looked at the measurements earlier, so you can take her. Um, I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you here in a minute. Let's, let's show you. It's easier to see 
rather than to do. PJ Coppage is an excellent project for school, for young and older kids, um, especially the notebook design one. That one, I just absolutely love it. Um, I wish I had to save the picture of what one lady did with her um, little notebook. Actually, let's pull that back up so that you can see the one I'm talking about because I just don't want... Um, Don't want you to miss out on that. Pull that back up. Hopefully I'm not using up too much juice. Um, actually, let's do a search. Can I do a search? I should be able to do a search. Yeah. Let's see if this pulls up. It does. OMG. Okay. So what I've done is I went back to Designs by Little B. This is the notebook one, PJ, I was talking about, PJ Coppage. Super, super, super adorable. That one and actually the Crayola one, the crayon one too, because you can put the kid's name or the teacher, Mrs. whatever her name is right there. And in this one, the lady put... um Something about a great teacher can never be erased or something to that effect. She had the words she merged onto here with the font. It was adored. Then, of course, you got um, the game. I forget the name right now. I used to play it. And then here's the blank one that we're doing now. Okay. So, and then these, notice she put these on the books as well. She has a lot of designs that you can just, um, add to it. Look, look at the little balloon doggy and the little balloon doggy key fob thingy do flappy. Adored. So there's a lot that you can do with these to make it your own. That's why I absolutely loved the idea of this design. So it was it was super, super cute. Um, yes, this vinyl that I was showing you guys with this notebook did come from Hobby Lobby. It was in the ribbon section and it was on a roll. Um, a small roll, eight-inch roll of ribbon. Hello, Mina Row. How are you? Welcome. Thank you, Jackie Maddox. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jennifer H. Hey, how are you? Welcome. EJ's daughter. Yes, this is awesome for craft fairs. Totally awesome. It really is. This will be really, really cute for a craft fair. Now is the time to add that heart to your file. Just saying, right? <laughs> Why did you choose the elastic cord over the band? I chose the elastic cord because I don't know where my fold-over elastic is. That's why. I don't, I don't know what I did with it. My la fold-over elastic is around here somewhere, still packed up. Um, I have a few questions. If you don't mind, I want to start doing my own projects. Sure. What are your questions? Let us know. Time you said she just ordered some. Hi! What's her name on Facebook? Whose name on Facebook? Uh, Melissa is Designs by Little B. Is that who you were asking about? Let me slide this over so I can see. I can't see. The PJ Mommy. Hello. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is turn out cute. Let's make another. This was fun. Let's make another. So I'm going to minimize um, this. Yeah, the vinyl that they have on the roll at Hobby Lobby is adorable. I absolutely love that red buffalo plaid. I bought a roll of it. I don't know what I did with it, but I have a roll of it somewhere. Okay, so this one I put my name on, as you see, and it turned out super cute. And now we have this adorbed glitter vinyl that we'll be using, and I have purple thread that I'm going to be using for the glitter vinyl one. So let's find something totally adorbed. To put on that one. Now, I loved that monogram. I don't know what monogram I have, actually. So, I'm going to do a look-see at my monograms really quickly because I can't remember if I have that monogram of hers or not. Um, because her monogram with the... with the outline on it is just adorbs. Okay, that's a regular monogram. 
Other than the Cricut, what other items do you prefer for a beginner to buy to make regular bling t-shirts? Oh, bling? Um, if you're going to do rhinestones, then you would need to check out um, Be Createful. Do Be Createful. Excuse me, and when you go to Be Createful, look for um, her starter kit. That's what I would suggest it is the starter kit. Now, as far as buying stuff, all of the stuff for the most part is in the starter kit. Now, I'm not a um, person that would be able to show you how to create your own rhinestone designs. I don't do that. I actually made a video showing how you can make your own rhinestone designs with the Cricut. And, y'all, I got, like, 10 minutes into it and was over it. I was over it. I really was because I was like, I'm not about to sit here and make this video. Um, But a lot of it had to do with the fact that it was, um, see, okay, hold up, time out. This is why I would suggest to you to have a book of some sort showing you all of your different fonts and your monograms and stuff because right now I am like scrolling through fonts and this so I shouldn't have to scroll through to figure out what's what uh, but I haven't looked through some of these in so long that it's messing me up and I should know what this stuff is but I don't um let's see I don't remember the monogram so we're going to have to figure out something oh look oh, look oh, look oh, look oh. here's Stitchtopia I love her stuff. So this is a circle of my Let me see what her other one was. Elegant satin. Let's see. Let's look at a picture. Well, that's pretty. What size is it? One and a half. So I should be able to use that for my own monogram. I'm thinking about just doing one letter on this book. So if I do that, then I don't think this will work because this is a circle monogram. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. That's two letters. Eh, I'll just do one letter. Let's go back. That was a really pretty monogram I had somewhere that would have been real cute with this, but I can't think of what it is. Go figure. What did that L look like? Not L, E. This is the E. That's pretty. Thank you, Galena. I appreciate that. Hey, Missy Black, how are you? Welcome. Oh, the bling shirt with the red bottoms. Yes, that's a very popular one. All right, you guys, so let us add. We're going to merge in. Um, let's see, desktop. No, I won't click access. Embroidery. And then monogram. Scroll down to Stitchtopia. And satin. And that E was an inch and a half. We're going to go for the gut, though. Do I have bigger? Yes. I have two and a half. Now the band is gonna go through it, but I think it's gonna be really cute. It might be too much though now to think about it. Okay, so here's my letter E. And I'm going to rotate it. And here we go. Boop. We have a quick rotation button right here in the rotation bar. So rotate it. And here we go. This is what I'm going to use, and I'm actually going to center it. The band is going to go through it, but I'm okay with that. And then this E is going to be purple. So this time what I'm going to do is instead of leaving the E as the last and then having to fast forward through and back up and all that jazz, I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to click on this number six, and I'm going to move it up onto that number three so that this now becomes step number three, all right? And now four will be what it needs to be, five and then six, okay? So I left the 
USB key in the machine. So let me grab that and we'll put it in the machine. And I'm sorry, in the computer. And let's see how quickly we can get this stitched out. So that's the one I did before. I'm going to go ahead and delete it because we're done with it. We don't need that anymore. Um, did I save it? Oh, I hadn't saved it yet. So now that we move that into the right place, let's um, save as. And then I'm going to just name this one E. And then I'm going to go to where it is and drag it onto my E drive. All right. Just like that. Okay. And there we are. It's a DST file, not EMB. I'm um, sorry, PES, like I want it. But. I'm not going to worry about it. Hopefully, I, I'm pretty sure that machine reads DSC files. So we're going to minimize that, and we're going to switch back over to our machine. And then we will get this new design loaded on and get started. So I still have to put stabilizer on to the second hoop. All right, so let's back this up and stretch this up there so that you can see what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to go back, 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 and then go home, and then we're going to stick that in there. And now that it's in there, we're going to hit USB. Here is the DST. We're going to upload it and make sure that it's going to pull up. Is it going to pull up? Nope, it's not going to pull up. Okay, so I'm going to have to use PES, which isn't that big of a deal because it's still pulled up on Sewit Pro. Now I just need to get it switched over. And wow, let me get you pulled over to here. And let me get that. Delete that off of there. Go to Sewit Pro. I save as what are you DST? So save is the last thing that I did. And go back to the desktop. And grab that PES and put it on my E drive. And there it is. All right. So now that that's on there, let me get my hoop. I have another hoop back here already, ready already. And <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and put the stabilizer on this hoop. All right. Another 5x7. As I mentioned earlier, this is a 5x7 project. All right, so we have our stabilizer, and now we're going to put this over on the machine. Did I cut out our vinyl like I was supposed to for the new vinyl? No, I did not. So I'm going to set this stabilizer right there, and while our um, placement stitch is stitching out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the pocket out of the new vinyl and the front out of the new vinyl. Okay, so let's switch back over to the machine and we're going to go ahead and put this into the USB slot right there. There's our PES like it's supposed to be and boom, there we go. All right, I did not change my thread, so let's do that. This is the pool holder. Let's take that off. I'm actually going to cut it from the top. And we're going to pull that through, throw it away. Grab this absolutely stunning 
royal purple. Put that up there. I'll put that right there. And now, oh, why are you snagging? We don't want you to snag, so I'm going to take that off. Put that back behind the scene, bring it up around, and whoop! Go ahead on Faith. Faith is a threading machine. Alright, so there's our thread. We have. And now we need to stitch our placement stitches, right? So we need to get that going. And as I mentioned, while that's stitching, I'm going to cut our vinyl. Oh, let me grab it so that you can see the vinyl we're working with. This vinyl. We're going to cut this. And again, this came from Hobby Lobby as well. So we're going to cut this in our size that we need for this project. And I'm actually going to... Ah, I hear a noise that's not a good noise. I'm going to cut this at the cutting table. So now that the machine has stopped, y'all know how that goes. You walk away and what happened? Chaos ensues. But it's all right. We're getting vinyl cuts. I'm trying to make sure it's straight. Now, the other time I cut the vinyl, what was it? It was five inches wide? Five inches. I think it was five inches. And then we cut it in half. I'm going to go ahead and cut that too while I'm in here. But I'm not cutting in the air as I was doing before. That was not the funnest of things to do. Alright, and now I'm two and a half. I think it's good. That's five, so we need two and a half. That's supposed to be six. Small pocketbook helps. Get out of the way. It was almost faster for me to cut it with the scissors, y'all. All right. Now we go two and a half. Hey. All right. So we have our pocket and our back cut, as we were supposed to have had earlier. What is that saying? Check and rethread the upper thread. Was I supposed to put it up there? I don't think I was supposed to put it up there. Bobbin to make sure nothing wonky is going on down there. Well, look at there. I see a bird's nest. Usually, problem down below means something is off up here. What are the dimensions of the notebooks again? They are, I think somebody answered. Let me see. Four and a half. It's actually three and a quarter. Four and a half by three and a quarter. Uh, grab one. Oops. 
you know how well you can see that. Let me see. How well can you see that? Right there. No. One and a half by three point two five. Now, whenever you have a um, situation where you it's stitched ahead and you need to back up, we are going to go to Adjust, and we're going to go to the picture of the needle with the plus and the minus sign in the middle, and then we are going to use the backup right here, the minus sign, and I'm going to hold it down. And it's going to move closer in to where we need to be. And then we're going to hit go. Hopefully I threaded everything correctly. It don't look like I did. I don't know what's going on. Okay. There's our tick mark for the pocket. Four by four extension hoops for this project. Um, I'm going to. You can. Actually, no, you can't. You can't because even though it's an extension hoop and it's longer this way, it's not bigger this way. And this is definitely five. It's over four inches, and the repositional hoop is less than four inches technically. So you won't be able to do this project with that. Um, we have stitched our placement stitches, so what we will need to do next is put our vinyl down, remember with the spray adhesive, but we're not going to do the fold over elastic, so we can skip this next step, okay? And I'm not going to use spray adhesive, main reason why I cut it to where it's just setting inside the hoop it shouldn't move so I'm not worried about it but we do need to skip this step right here so let's go ahead one by touching the spool of thread and now it's going to stitch my initial okay so that's the next step And because I chose a little bit larger of an initial, it may take, you know, a good little while for it to stitch. But if you didn't do anything on these notebooks, we would be done with this almost by now. So it doesn't take much to make them. I absolutely love. A lot of her projects are very, very simple to make and to stitch. Let me make sure... You can see. And again, this is a Stitch Topia font, so it will stitch out absolutely beautifully. Diane Country Hut, how are you? We are making in the hoop mini composition notebook holders. So this is one that we did earlier. Super adored. I found this vinyl from Hobby Lobby. Found it at Hobby Lobby. And this is what's on the inside. Just a simple composition notebook. And we are making our second one. This one will just have a large 
uh, monogram letter on it. Yeah, the purple thread is beautiful, Sonya. It is absolutely gorgeous. The stabilizer that I'm using, Sonya, in her instructions, she said that you can use tear away or cut away. It doesn't matter um, because you're going to end up cutting it out anyways. But I'm using tear away only because I, I had already had it and a lot of her projects take tear away. Yeah, he's Miss Beckham. That's funny. He should have not told you he went to uh, Hobby Lobby. That's funny. Gail McNair says you have a book you made with all of your fonts. The downside is when you get more fonts and forget to add a new one to your book. That is absolutely the truth. Very, very annoying. Did you miss the price? How much is that ribbon vinyl? Um, regular price. Regular price on the ribbon vinyl is four ninety nine, as you see in the upper right hand corner of this sticker. It's four ninety nine a roll, and it's eight inches wide roll by twenty four inches long. Hobby Lobby is where I got it from. Um, it was on sale last week, so you know how Hobby Lobby does now, where they put certain things on sale at certain times. So it was 50% off last week. And the first one was called Lavender Holograph. I think that was the last one. Hold on, let me make sure. Lavender Holograph. And this one is Iridescent Silver. $4.99 for the roll. And this is the what's left of the first one that I did so we got a good bit left I could actually probably make a whole nother book out of it so uh Kathy yeah I'll drop a link in the chat real quick because I still have it pulled up matter of fact I'm gonna pull up all of the books not what I need to do. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Let's see how easy I am. There we go. Now this time, copy, not paste. And chat is right here. There's the link to all of her composition books. That threading the needle never worked for me. So I, it's hit or miss with those machines, but you have to be sure that the needle is installed all the way in for certain um, to make sure that it does work. The elastic on the finished book is a roll of elastic from... Michael, no, Joanne, no, Michael, I think it was Michael, it was either Michael or Joanne, and as you see, there's iridescent on here, there's silver on here, and there's gold on here, and it goes on sale every year for the holidays, well, I always buy it on clearance after the holidays, that's a roll of elastic, uh, yeah, faux leather, definitely, that's what this is, this is faux leather, Technically. Well, it's vinyl. But, yes, you can use faux leather as well. Good night, Donna Cooper. Thank you for joining us. Yes, you can cut the vinyl with the Cricut. You certainly can ahead of time. So here's our E. That's there. We don't need um, the next step that's showing on the machine is the um, for the elastic um uh, Fold over elastic, we're not using it, so we're going to skip that. We do want our little hole for the stretchy elastic cord, so I'm going to stitch that. 
That's Joanne's Melody Wilcox. Thank you. I appreciate that. Where do I buy embroidery vinyl? Oh, gosh, lots of places. Um, as you see, Hobby Lobby has some. They even have some on the roll, a huge, long, big roll. Um, there's Mikri World, I think is what it's called. Uh, My Punk Broidery has vinyl as well. There's a lot of different places to purchase embroidery vinyl from. Or the, a lot of times you'll find it under marine vinyl. Uh, Designs by Little B used to sell it, but I think she's stopped selling it now, I think. All right, so we've done our circle. So now we're going to take this off. Remember, our next step after that is to put the pockets on the back. So let's take it off of the hoop after we lift the foot. Look at that. OMG, y'all. Wow. That turned out really pretty. Okay. So let's turn it over, and here are the pocket pieces that I did go ahead and cut. And we want to lay it up against those picks here that stitched on the very first step, the placement stitch, All right? And I'm going to have to use regular tape again because I still don't know where the blue tape that look for it, even though now I'm looking across the room and it's laughing at me from way over there. All right, so there's that one. Here's the other pocket. And again, you're going to lift face side up. You're going to lay it on the back side of this hoop, not on the front. This is on the back. Okay. And tape it down so that it doesn't flop over and flap under, and then you stitch it all kind of wonky. We don't want that. So now that it's taped, we're going to turn it back over. And carefully put it back on the machine. I'm going to make sure it doesn't fold over on me on the underside. And then put it back on. All right. There we go. And so now that that's done, we just stitch our last step. And that's it. As far as the embroidery machine is concerned, we're done. After this stitch is out. When cutting your vinyl for the 5x7 hoop, size is 7x9. fits perfectly. Yas. She actually has, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. That could be the, um, yeah, I knew it was acting monkey. Let's see. That sounded like, um, that sounded like it's bird nesting again. Let's see. Yep, what did I tell you? Okay, so I don't have something threaded right up here. Look at that. That looks tragic. OMG. Oh, and I heard it, and I didn't stop it. I'm sorry, Faith. I should have stopped it. Look at that. Bird nesting. Bird nesting usually is an issue up top. So, what I like to do at this point then is check because I'm thinking it should have went under here somewhere or something. I'm missing the step and I'm pretty sure it's in here. So I'm going to verify that and of course this takes away from the time that we're supposed to be getting this done in a not super fast manner but you know we're supposed to be getting this done so there did I put here you are So, I'm going to verify yeah okay so what I like to suggest to people whenever you're having issues I don't care who you are or how long you've had the machine just go back double check and we're going to double check and make sure so here's our spool it goes to our lever here and around, which is where I took it, then down, then back up, then down, behind the bar, and then thread the needle. Then with your, 
Um, this is one thing they do suggest is a spool cap. And my uh, repair person even, you saw I had the spool cap on and then I took it off. He suggested that too. So we may have to put that spool cap on. Um, but I just wanted to make sure all of this was threaded like it was supposed to be because that's usually the culprit. All right. So I'm going to, normally I don't, well, I always pull it backwards and you ain't supposed to, but I'm pulling it backwards. Now, make sure your foot is up, which it is. And I am going to come back and re thread all the way through all of this and make sure. Okay. Look at that. We're going on eleven o'clock and safely, you know we can't we can't be in the show without something crazy going down. All right, and now that I have the top needle threaded, I'm going to come down here just for the heck of it and make sure, yep, this is in like it's supposed to be, and re-thread that. It can never hurt to just go ahead and re-thread the machine, all right? And this time, I'm going to put this back and see if that helps because we didn't have issues the first time, but we're having issues now, and it could also be the vinyl, but it shouldn't be. And I'm going to show you something else that every, and those of you who know me and has watched this show for a while knows what I'm talking about before I even say anything. Every embroidery studio should have one of these in their studio, right? That is the Peggy Sissy Racer. You should have one because it will help. And this is pretty much what we're going to do is just get this and save it right off. Usually that would have went faster, but not too much time. Now, why did I do that? I did that because... What usually can end up happening is that bird's nest is going to come back and cause you more issues when you're trying to restitch this because it was tangled up thread. So as it comes back to try and stitch some more, it's going to keep tangling. So you want to get rid of all of that. All right. So, and I felt something just then. That's crazy. So we may have to run a piece of tissue paper up under this to make sure that it's not the back side of that vinyl dragging. So let me grab some paper. And this is, I have a box of deli paper. You know how when you go to a deli and they just snatch out a already pre-cut square and blah, blah, blah. That's all this is. It's just like tissue paper. And I'm going to slide that under there because that will also help make sure that it's not the vinyl dragging on the bottom of the, um, on the bottom of the machine. And because it wasn't stitching prop, uh, we cut all of the back of that, I'm going to start it over, okay? So let's put the foot back down and let's try this again. Thread doesn't like to be threaded in the number six position. Yeah, sometimes machines can be temperamental. Definitely needs to be temperamental. I mean, definitely can be temperamental. Can you use regular HTV vinyl instead of embroidery vinyl? No, you can't. And that's because regular HTV vinyl is too thin. You'll need vinyl with some thickness to it, so you won't be able to do um, regular HTV. I found that it works better to use the spool holder. I use a thread stand or a cup. Beside. I do have a thread stand. Um, this is my second project ever doing with this machine. The first project was when we did the first book. So I'm getting used to using face. Um, I wasn't able to embroider before, so she's working like a charm now and. We'll get used to her little quirks as we go along. Every machine has quirks. Every 
every missing report. Nice. Look at this. Tissue paper made all the difference in the world. Okay. So let's take this off. Oops, my way. Oh, you gotta raise the foot. You gotta raise the foot. Okay. So as you see, it just stitched through the tissue paper on the back. No big deal. So we're just gonna take this off. And then we'll come in and we'll tear it out from the middle part as well. So let me get you switched over so that we can get this out of the hoop and get to finishing out our show tonight. I appreciate y'all joining me for such a really cute project. It turned out super cute. I'm taking the tape off from where we... I have to tape this vinyl down because I don't want tape stuck on my hoop. Take this one. And take this side. You're welcome. You're welcome. That purple E is pretty. Purple E is absolutely pretty. Full cap is the issue. Yeah. It is a new to me machine. Yes, it is. I did not have a 5x7 We adopted faith and gave faith a new home all right thank you faith we enjoyed you tonight all right so i'm going to take the rest of this tissue paper off because otherwise i can't get to my pockets and hopefully this time i won't cut so close to my stitches i'm cutting a little bit further away from my stitches so we won't have the issue we had before Matter of fact, I'm going to cut from the back. I thought I cut from the back last time. I don't worry about it. And the back side isn't as pretty because of the way the stitches kind of jacked up when it was, um, when it was bird nesting. But like I mentioned before, this is mine, so I'm not super worried about it. And all we're doing is cutting this out. I'm going to let y'all see the cutting out from the back side so I don't cut too close from this side. All right. I have a shark fan of some tissue paper. That. Oh, whoop. Pretty. OMG. All right. So our leather cutter, leather, leather, leather punch. And again, I'm going to have to fold this in so that I can get to the hole. And then come to where the hole is. And all I'm going to do is center. Whoop. Is it going to focus? No. Yes. Whoops. Wrong way. There we go. Focus. See where the hole is, and I just want to make sure that that reaches that hole. And dead center. And then once it's dead center, you squeeze, and you hear the click. And that's it cutting through the vinyl. So you squeeze. It wasn't a super hard squeeze, but it was enough. And then, like I mentioned, I kind of like give it a twist with it. I'm still squeezing it and I kind of twist it a little bit to help make sure it's cut um, all the way around because the last time I had to fish out the hole but this time look the hole is there. I don't have to fish out anything. All right so here is our book. Now let's get our elastic. Now I used silver last time. We can use silver this time but I also have iridescent. Um that iridescent might be cute, but I'm going to stick with silver because that iridescent has more of a green hue and this iridescent has more of a purplish hue. So let's get our eight inches. All right, so here's our elastic. And again, we're going to thread it through the hole. 
Hold it in place. Thread the second one through the hole. That was easier. And then to allow me the room and the slack to tie it without it coming through, I'm going to clip a pin on this side or just put something on that side to help hold it to keep you from pulling it all the way through like I almost did the first time. And then tie our knot. Make sure it's a good sturdy knot. And there we have our knot tied so that once we take this pin out, you're good on this side. All right, and so here we are. Let's do a green book this time. Because I think I used red in the last book. Not that it matters because you're not really going to see the covers. And this time, I didn't cut through the stitches. Yay! So my pockets are actually in place like they're supposed to be. Even though now the back side looks a little ratchet from all the birds nesting. And I'll show you that in a minute. So there's the ratchet looking bird nesting uh, that we stitched over. But again, I don't care. Technically, that is the back of the book. So I'm not super worried about it. <clears throat> oh, I didn't cut the extra of the elastic. So it's a little bulky back there. But I'll trim that after the show. So... And here's our elastic, and there's our new book. So we have two books that we've done, that we've made. As I mentioned, this design is on Designs by Little B, the simplest little composition bookmaker that you can create uh, in the hoop. And, you know, you got your little notebook. Maybe you want to jot down your grocery list. This could be your grocery list book. And how cute would it be to have the little grocery list and a quarter keeper attached to it if you're an Aldi shopper and you don't have to worry about not having a quarter in your grocery list to be with you. It's small enough to keep in your purse uh, or in your car or buy your embroidery machine to jot down notes and take orders and stuff like that. So there's a lot you can do with these little books. They're super cute. I've been wanting to do a video with this design um, since she came out with them about a month or so ago. Um, but I probably will go back and do another, um, regular video or edit this one so that it'll just be a standalone video just for these books by themselves. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me and thank you for cheering on the embroidery project tonight. Um, as I mentioned earlier on in the show, if you are in the Facebook hoop group, I'll put that out there um, every so often on Sunday to see what you would like to um, do as a project on Sundays. And that way the show is geared to what you're interested in uh, instead of me picking all the time. Sometimes I like y'all's ideas too. And if you ever have an idea for a show, just shoot it to me on Facebook or uh, thebabysbooty at gmail.com and we'll give it some consideration see if we can't bring it to life. So I'm super excited uh, to join you guys with more projects in the months ahead. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of your little mini composition notebooks that you decide to make or your Hobby Lobby vinyl project. Either way, be sure to post pictures in the Hoop Group so that we all can see it. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. I apologize. I ran over by about 11 minutes. So hope you guys have a great evening. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next video. All right. So have a great night. Bye.